Let me start by asking you guys a question. Do you ever have those days, you know, those long 12 to 14 hour days that just never seem to end? You get home at the end of those days and you're thinking to yourself the whole day, and when I get home, I'm just gonna get home, sleep, not do anything, you know, just relax. Most athletes in here would probably know what I'm talking about. When you go to a tournament, that's what happens. You have 10 volleyball games in a row. You get home at the end of the day, you're physically exhausted, having pushed yourself to the limits of your physical ability. ability. But then you get home. And I think I speak the truth when I say when most of us get home, we don't do what we said we would. We don't go to sleep. We have homework for IB, man, okay? Like, there's no time for this sleeping. What is sleep, okay? <laughs> so we go home and do homework. But what, how are we able to do this? Like, after a 12 to 14-hour day at school or any other place you might have been, I know everyone's involved in, like, a gajillion things. Um, how do we manage to do homework? How do we have that energy? Well, the, what it is in that session is what we're using is something special. It's the power of will. It were, it's our mind's energy. It's no longer physical energy because that's clearly been exhausted throughout the day. So today, I want to talk to you guys about how that's a bit different, you know, why the power of will is important in our lives and how the extent to which it can actually take an effect in our daily situations. So let's start by talking about what will is. There's a difference between will and willpower. Will, as we all know, is usually defined as the mental faculty by which one chooses or decides on a course of action, okay? It's also um, determination and like resolution, okay? So what's the, what's the difference between this and willpower then? Willpower to me is different than will and that definition that we've seen before is slightly um, lackadaisical, it's not enough. So let's take a look at Ramesh Sassen's willpower and self-discipline, what he says. Willpower is the ability to overcome laziness and procrastination. It is the ability to control or reject unnecessary or harmful impulses. It is the ability to arrive at a decision and follow it with perseverance until its successful accomplishment. So that's willpower. So how is will any different? Will to me is, bit, is different because to me will is stubbornness. It's being stubborn and nearly to the point of unreasonableness and like you're being irrational, you know, just doing things because it has to be done a certain way. And I think this is something we need to have more in our daily lives. But why? That, that, that doesn't sound something like something positive. Why would I want to be irrationally unreasonable? You know, like why? Well, it depends how you look at it. And to explain this point, I'm going to tell you guys a little story um, that is relevant to me. So. I was seven years old. Picture me without the beard in here. I was seven years old, okay? Um, so at age seven, I was told that I have a case of anemia, rather severe. Like I wasn't gonna die, but if I didn't take it, I, like if I didn't take precautions, it would eventually get more serious, okay? So I was told of this at age seven, and I was, I was kind of in shock. I was like, whoa, why? This is, this, that, that's not cool. <laughs> I don't wanna have anemia. Okay, because anemia, as we all know, causes you to get physically exhausted faster, have less attention span, just be generally tired all the time. I know as IB students we are, but that's besides the point. Um, so when I was told this, this little seven-year-old me, I just refused. I was like, nope, sorry, I don't have anemia. What do you mean? Like, no, it's not, it doesn't work like that. You have anemia. But I flat out refused, and I said no. And you know, I took it further. I didn't say no just to having anemia. I said, no, man, medication just doesn't work on my body. Just any kind of medication. Forget about anemia. They're like, dude, this isn't going to work. You're just like, going to get it worse. But I said, no. So much to the dismay of my parents, I refused to take any medication for this. And lo and behold, something incredible happened. I was tested again a couple years later. There was no sign of me having ever been anemic. And that's something that, that, like, that is passed down through our family, like everybody's anemic. It's terrible, I know, but that's besides the point again. But I wasn't anemic at all. And here's the other surprising part. No medication had any effect on my body. Nothing, I couldn't take sleeping pills, antibiotics, nothing, nothing worked. Okay, so I just hoped like, and prayed, oh God, oh God, I hope I never get sick, okay? But no medication had any effect on my body. And this really, this victory of my mind over my body sort of you know, made me think, what is 
What is the possibility here? What can we do? If our mind is able to control our body this strongly, if a seven-year-old boy can like be so strong-willed and like just go refuse something flat out and actually make it into a reality defying all medical uh, explanations, what can we do with this? For IB students, we should be able to do something big with this, right? As we're told. So let's check, out the, let's check out the IB learner profile. Here it is in all its glory and colorfulness. In IB, um, we're told to be open-minded, inquirers, reflective, principal thinkers, communicators, knowledgeable, risk-takers, caring, and balanced. Notice something missing? We're told to be all this, and we're expected when we're in an environment where we're trained to be and pushed to be these things. They're all great things. But we're missing strong-willed. What would it do if we add a strong will? But to me, I think if we add a strong will to this, it change from the IB learner profile to the IB leader profile. So this message is what I want to bring today. This is my idea. And I just want to pose a challenge to you guys. You guys, we've, we're here today. We've heard amazing speakers so far. So we're going to hear, hear even more speakers throughout the day. And they all have a message. They all have a passion. They all have something that they're telling us. Okay? We've been told to go for it. We've been told, and we're going to be told, to just do it and just be, not be afraid of failures. But how do we go about doing this is by being strong-willed. I'm giving you guys, like, the holy grail here. Okay? So this is how you do it. You just have to flat out refuse to be wrong. No. Like, I'm not wrong, and I'm going to make you wrong. I'm going to make myself right. So, this can be applied everywhere. I sat down, I was thinking, okay, so how can I do this in my extracurriculars? Made a list. Um, I'm sure a lot, of it is, a lot of these things are very familiar to you guys. Level seven. Um, <laughs> so, so, these are things we do. So, imagine if we took that strong will, that stubbornness, and we applied it to all these things. If we did this, then like every single one of us, we don't have to do it in every one of them, but we should just do it in one. What would the world be? There would truly, if we were to take it all, there would truly be no obstacles in our lives. There would truly be no force that can stop the people who are here in this conference room today from doing whatever they wanted to do. So to conclude, I just want to give you guys a quote from the Ever Serious book. I don't know if you guys read it. There's this boy, Dominic, 14 years old, um, sorry, 13 years old, um, very young, very frail. He is chosen to go climb Mount Everest. Pretty big for a 14-year-old guy, right? So he's chosen to go climb Mount Everest, become the youngest person. And in their training camp, there is a boot camp that these guys are selected to, and they go in this book. Um, in the training camp, there's their coach. Their coach is Cesario, and he tells them in his speech that he's giving them that you go in mountaineering, you go until it hurts, then you push through the pain and keep going anyway. You know, that's a powerful message. Like, and that just stuck with me ever since I read those books. I was like, you know, this, things are possible if, and again, sorry, my confirmation of my mind winning over my body when I was seven years old, this really did take an effect on me. If we do go until we're stopped and then just refuse to be stopped, just drive over it all and just go, keep going, it's possible to do anything that we want. So my message to you guys is to be as passionate and as strong-willed as you can be in everything that you do. We've heard amazing speeches so far about Canadian Arctic, OSED, various things, okay? And all we need to do in order to take these things to the next level is be strong-willed. Steve Jobs passed away recently. If you, I don't know if you guys read his biography. I did as soon as it came out. Yes, I'm a geek. Um, I guess it applies to all of us anyway. We're here. Um, <laughs> so I read his biography as soon as it came out, and... This man, this man was just, at times, people describing him, he was just irrational. He was just crazy. He just said things. He's like, no, the inside of the computer has to be pretty, right? People are like, why does that matter? And yet we see the success of Apple today, having recently become one of the biggest companies and most valuable companies in the world, even like past Exxon a couple um, weeks ago, you know? And this guy took this company to the next level that, that it just became synonymous with being successful. Apple equals success, selling millions of devices, right? And that was just because of his irrational, stubborn, pure will. Just because he said it has to be done this way, and that's how it's going to be done. So my fellow IB students, be irrational, be stubborn, and be unreasonable. Thank you.